that's a good, I get two brownie points for that. <laughs> I was almost a year at St. Paul's and I said St. Luke's, which was my former, former parish. <laughs> so welcome for those who are here and those online, welcome as well. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the Almighty and everlasting God, who in the Paschal mystery established the new covenant of reconciliation, grant that all who have been reborn into the fellowship of Christ's body may show forth in their lives what they profess by their faith. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the reading. reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them for as many as owned the lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet and it was distributed to each as they had need. The word of the Lord. Please stand and join me in reading. Psalm 133, responsively. Oh, how good and pleasant it is. When brethren live together in unity. It is like fine oil upon the head. That runs down upon the beard. Upon the beard of Aaron. And runs down upon the collar of his robe. It is like the dew of Hermon. That falls upon the hills of Zion. For there the Lord has ordained the blessing. Life A reading from the first letter of John. We declare to you what was from the beginning, 
What we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life. This life was revealed and we have seen it and testified to it and declare to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. We declare to you what we have seen and heard so that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you, that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him while we are walking in the darkness, we lie and do not do what is true. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. My little children, I am writing these things to you so you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. The word of the Lord. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, called the twin, 
One of the twelve was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we've seen the Lord. He said to them, unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house. This time, Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. See my hands? Reach out your hand, put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. And Jesus said to him, have you believed because you've seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. called Low Sunday. <laughs> that horrible appellation given to it because it's not High Sunday like it was last Sunday with tons of people here, but it's still Easter. See, in the liturgical year of the church, I love how we, we, we say things. So it's like the first Sunday in Advent. It's the first Sunday after Christmas. It's the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, maybe sixth, eighth Sunday in Epiphany, in Lent. This is the second Sunday of Easter. A lot of Sundays to go of Easter. <laughs> we have 50 days of Easter. And that's an important thing for the church to remember that Easter is that important of a feast solemnity for us that it is 50 days of Easter. That the Lord's re resurrection is so key to who we are as believers and as Christians that we've got 50 days to do this. And it's a high Sunday every Sunday of that. Though after last Easter Sunday, I had some guests for the weekend. First guests in my house. Former parishioner former treasurer <laughs> with his new wife and baby on the way and we were just in Vermont we stopped we shop come by and see you Vermont, Manchester. <laughs> real close okay after Easter service we went out to eat they left I laid down on my couch for my liturgical nap and I turned on the TV and said, what's on? Oh my, I haven't seen this in a long time. The Wizard of Oz. <laughs> so I watched The Wizard of Oz. I'm thinking, there's got to be something in this that I can steal. <laughs> and as I'm listening to it, and there are religious overtones, I'm sure that the author of the original books was not looking at it in a religious context, but there is evil versus good. There's the Emerald City, which many people think of as heaven. The wizard who has a God complex, not that we're aware of anything like that in our world today, who was in the, in the black and white version part of the film, who was a snake oil salesman. Just saying. So... <laughs> So as I'm watching this and I'm looking at the characters, what are the gifts that they're after? Do you remember? A heart for loving, a brain for wisdom, and courage, courage. Those three elements are really what it's like to be a Christian. Really what it's like to be a believer in God doesn't matter which denomination. It's to find a heart to love 
God with our whole heart, our whole soul, our whole being, all our strength, and to love our neighbor as we love God and as ourselves. To have the courage to go out into the world and share that and do that in a world that does not really like that kind of stuff today. And the wisdom to know the difference between good and evil, between truth and lie, between God's word and the word of the world. I'm not going to go into the ruby slippers. <laughs> but that whole thing of, I want to, I want to go home. I want to go home. I want to go where there's safety. But the truth is, is being a Christian is not safe. And where's the proof of that? Look at my hands. Look at my side. Jesus enters into this picture after the resurrection, the same night as the resurrection. He's encountered in the garden. Mary runs when she finally hears her name, runs and literally throws herself at his feet, grabs hold and clings to him, grasps him. Some translation has Jesus saying, Mary, don't touch me. Don't cling to me. Don't hold on to me as if I'm going to disappear again and that you're trying to keep me here. Don't do that. Go. Proclaim that I have risen. Go tell those guys that ain't here. Notice that? Go tell them. Where are they? You heard it at the beginning of the gospel. Lock themselves up in the room. Even when Jesus appears at night, after they've heard about the resurrection, they're still without courage. They've locked themselves out of fear. And Jesus appears and gives them shalom, his peace. In John's gospel, this is also the, re the resurrection is also Pentecost for John's gospel. <sighs> Receive the Holy Spirit. Receive that spirit. Go out into the world and forgive. Stop being locked up in here. Go. Okay. Okay. We've seen him. We've seen him. He really is back. One week later, we're at the rest of the story. Where are they? Still locked up in the room. Still not very courageous. Still not very forgiving. This time, Thomas, we don't know why he wasn't there last time. Maybe he was still very in grieving. Didn't want to be with them. I mean, they're the ones who abandoned Jesus. Maybe he didn't want to be with them. And that's where poor Thomas, God bless him. Good old Doubting Thomas. 2,000 years of a nickname. Doubting Thomas. And we hear that in there. Unless I, I won't believe you. That could have come out of a lot of grief. Out of a lot of, my world is upside down. I followed this, this guy for so many years and I saw him do all these wonderful things and I saw what they did to him on the cross. I, I just can't believe it. Unless I, I, I touch. Unless I touch. And that next week, again, Jesus appears. Again, peace be with you. Shalom. Don't be afraid. Peace. Hey, Thomas, come over here. Touch. See? Touch. Come closer. <clears throat> Thursday and Friday, I was helping out at Grace in Manchester, and I talked about how when we draw away from, Jesus always draws closer. What do we have on Monday, Thursday? The washing of the feet. How many people participated in washing of the feet at that service? Six? Seven? We drew away. I mean, our feet. <laughs> they tell so much about us. Didn't have my pedicure today, so I can't go up and have my foot washed. Like the Lord cares. It's about that humbling, the courage to be vulnerable 
and fragile in front of the Lord. The Lord Peter, we're, we're, we're Peter. No, you're not going to wash my feet. Unless I do, you can have no part of me. Do we hear those words? Unless I wash your feet, you can have no part of me. And then, Good Friday, he's on the cross. I gave a, out a picture at, at Grace of an artist that I've come to love. All of his work is in the Brooklyn uh, Museum of Art. Jean-Jacques uh, Tissot, T-I-S-S-O-T, -S -S little French, just a little French. Could have been on the west side, I don't know. This wonderful artist has this tendency when he does the scripture stories is to do them from different views. And the picture that I passed out was a picture of the view from Jesus out off the cross to the congregant, to who's out there. All you who pass by, do you not see? Jesus beckoning them to come close at that moment. Now Thomas, he's beckoning, come closer touch it is me it's not a ghost elsewhere in one of the gospels jesus because they think that he's a ghost says do you have something to eat i'll prove i'm not a ghost i'll prove it do you have i'm with you but i want you to see that that when you talk about wanting love this is part of love this is the ultimate sign of my love for you i ask you to have peace but understand that peace comes with a price. That shalom peace comes with a price. You ask me to give you my love. I've given you my love, my life. But there's a price with that. Thomas, don't doubt. Believe. And then John, who's writing for second and maybe even third generation Christians when the gospel is written, is trying to lift them up. Blessed are those who have not seen, yet still believe. That's John writing to his community. And that's John writing to us. Blessed are we who believe, and we have not seen. Blessed are we with God's peace. Blessed are we with that Holy Spirit that gets breathed on us at our baptism and confirmation and all these other moments of life that Holy Spirit is supposed to get us going. The gifts that we seek, that Thomas seeks, that the apostles seek, that the gospel today asks us to seek are the same gifts from the Wizard of Oz. Our heart to be overflowing with love in a world that so desperately needs the gospel of love to oppose the gospel of hate that is being perpetrated day in and day out of looking at the other, not as other, but as brother and sister, as siblings in God, as made in that divine image. The courage to share that love. The courage to go out and risk that love. And the wisdom to know that we have God on our side. Receive the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is on our side to guide us. I think that this is more not about doubting Thomas, but about Jesus, the relentless teacher. He's back and he continues teaching. He continues to explain what it's all about. We had, I mean, the last third of John's gospel is the Last Supper. We don't hear about the institution of the Eucharist. We hear about washing of the feet. We hear about loving one another. We hear about, I'm going to and I'm going to send you into the world. And this is like a continuum. The apostles are is in the upper room where the Last Supper happened. They've locked themselves up there. Now they're being told, have courage. I'll break down those locked walls and locked doors. I'll appear behind them. I'll be with you. Do you trust me? Do you believe in me? That's another way to, to look at belief. Trust. Do you believe that I can get you to do this? Thomas asks questions throughout the gospel. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Follow me. Lord, we don't know where you're going. How can we follow you? Come and see. Too often, asking questions is not something that I remember growing up with being allowed to do too often. 
though I was known to be one that would ask, but why? But why? And I remember as a sophomore in high school, I was in the other tradition, my former life. And I did it as a sophomore in high school because I was trying to figure out who I was as a human being at that point because it was very confusing and things were not going well. And good old Sister Mary Consolata, God, I still remember her name, said, Mr. Burnell, please stay after class. I said, oh God, what I do now? What question did I ask that I shouldn't have asked? And she was wonderful and said, I'm giving you this. Every now and then I have to fill in the letters again because they fade. So this is from a sophomore in high school. She said, don't you ever doubt the gifts that you have to give and don't you ever be afraid of the questions. Be patient toward all that is unsolved in your heart and try to love the questions themselves. Do not seek the answers that cannot be given you because you would not be able to live them. And the point is to live everything. Live the questions now. Perhaps you will gradually, without noticing it, live long some, along some distant day into the answer. I've been going through stuff, getting ready to throw stuff out. Came across this from my sophomore year in high school. And I have found it to be true. You find yourself living into the answers. And that ultimately is what the discipleship is about, is living into the answers of the questions that you have about who God is in your life, in my life, in our life. Of how can I be a better disciple in my life? Follow me. Lord, can you help me break down the wall of unlovingness, whether it's of self or other, even when I don't want to sometimes? But can you help me? Yes, I can. Can you give me the courage to share my journey with others and help them to experience their journey and to live the questions in their lives? Yes, I can. Can I have your wisdom? I've given you my Holy Spirit. You have the wisdom. You read the scriptures. You pray. That's for all of us. I haven't thrown this out for a reason. Not because I'm some sentimental buddy-duddy, but because it still means something, because I still have questions. And I'm hoping to live every day more and more into the answers, like Thomas. Thomas turned out to be one of the greatest evangelists in the church. In the 1500s, when the Portuguese got to what we now know of as India, Shockingly, they found a very live Christian church founded, supposedly, in history by Thomas. The church there is known as the Church Mar Thoma by Thomas. So, he did a lot going to that area. He far outdid Paul, in my opinion, in some ways. But we celebrate Thomas not because of doubt, but because he had an answer to a question. And his answer became, my Lord and my God. Do we say my Lord and my God enough in our own life? Depends. St. Francis used to love saying to people, the only gospel that people will ever read in their life is your life. How you live that gospel. The people outside those doors, do they read the gospel when they read your life? I go to church every Sunday. Don't look at me like that. I won't go to St. Matt's if I hear that. That's important. We wonder sometimes why we don't grow. It's because how we live 
does not be in, is not in sync often enough with what we say we believe as central to our lives. My Lord and my God, be with us to find the answers to the questions that always lead back to you. And let us be filled with your Holy Spirit that we can share with your courage, with your love, and with your wisdom what it means to be in your house. Amen. The chair. Filled with joy in these 50 days of Easter, let us pray to God who raised Christ from the dead and sent the Spirit to dwell among us. For peace from on high and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Hear our prayer, living God. For this holy gathering and for those who enter with faith, reverence, and fear of God, let us pray to the Lord. Hear our prayer, living God. For Rob, our bishop, Jason, our rector, Dennis, our celebrant, for the de priests, deacons, and all who minister in Christ, and for all the holy people of God, especially for Tim King in discernment for ordained ministry, let us pray to the Lord, Hear our prayer, living God. For the world and its leaders, our nation and its people, let us pray to the Lord. Hear our prayer, living God. For those in need, the suffering, Brad, Dennis, Alice, Jen, Rich, Jeff, Cindy, Mary Lynn, Judith Ann, and Marilyn, and the oppressed, travelers and prisoners, let us pray to the Lord. Hear our prayer, living God. For the dying and the dead, let us pray to the Lord. Hear our prayer, living God. We give thanks for the birthday of Susan Yost and the anniversary of Alan and Dee Burgoyne for ourselves and our communities of faith. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear our prayer, living God. Lord our God, we lift up to you these prayers 
asking you to hear them, that we may be faithful in our witness to you. In your precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved our neighbors as our hearts, we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Please be seated. Are there any announcements for the benefit of the community? Hearing none. They'll come back in October if you plant them as soon as the snow is gone. <laughs> So I want to put in a plug for the parish retreat, which is May what? May 17th. So normally, I don't really like going on vacation with my family, particularly <laughs> my extended you know, my brothers, sisters, parents, you know, because all that stuff just comes up. But yeah, no, that's a different story. Sir, <laughs> very different story. But. So, so it may seem a little odd okay. that, I, that I really enjoy spending a weekend with my parish family. Um, and, you know, going on retreat may seem a little intimidating, you know, just are we going to do weird things and sit around and talk about Jesus? And we might do a little bit of that. But the thing I want to say is it's really fun and it's really exciting and, and just there's just a lot of joy in seeing the gifts that we all bring uh, and the creativity that comes out and just the, the, the collective spirit that's there. So um, I highly recommend if you haven't, didn't do it last year, and, or even if you did, to, to do it again this year, May 17th uh, at the Camp Methodius. And uh, please join us. Thank you. Anybody else? Ascribe to the Lord the honor due God's name, bring your gifts into the Lord's courts with praise and thanksgiving. <laughs> Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. 
good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he destroyed death, but by his rising to life again he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. For he stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. When he had given thanks to you, he broke it gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. Again, he gave you thanks, gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and an ending life in him. And sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. For all this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, for by him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. <laughs> confidence in God's love for us, we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us.
God, for the people of God.
us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace. And grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Happy? That wasn't a question. <laughs> because the exclamation point is right here. <laughs> Happy, I send you forth in the name of this congregation that as you bring Jane communion, she feels part of this body because we are all one in Christ. God's peace with you. Thank you. Strengthen for service, Lord, the hands that have taken holy things. May the ears which have heard your word be deaf to clamor and dispute. May the tongues which have spoken and sung your praise be free from deceit. May the eyes which have seen the tokens of your love shine with the light of your hope. And may the bodies which have been fed with your precious body and blood be refreshed with the fullness of life. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Have a great day and a great week.